Hey, welcome back. Dr. Vinay Prasad here from the University of California, San Francisco. This is a new talk by request called How to Use Twitter. And this is VP edition, which means these are my opinions. If you don't like these opinions, you're entitled to your own opinion. You don't even have to listen to this video. But if you do want to hear these opinions, you can stay tuned. So people often ask me, especially those who don't have a Twitter account, especially professionals in the medical sciences, should I use Twitter? And I like to say I can't recommend that everyone use Twitter the same way, but I can recommend that you use it in a basic way. Use it as a reading device. What do I mean? In our lives, we all have websites we like to check out on a daily or weekly basis to see what's new. We get information from a variety of sources. I believe Twitter should be an additional source of information in your life. You can set up a Twitter account. You can pick a number of people to follow, people with your professional interests. And you get a TV channel, you get a website unlike any other website. My interests, cancer drug policy, evidence-based medicine, regulatory approval. Where on earth can I get a website like that? It's quite difficult. It's a narrow set of interests. But on Twitter, I can find a number of like-minded providers who put out the feed that I'm interested in reading. I can get access as a reader to things that I otherwise wouldn't read. And I recommend for anybody in biomedicine to use it as a reader, use it as a way to consume information. That's level one use. That's the only way I can endorse you do use it, but that's a simple way. Step two, level two, speaker. Now, some people may choose to use it in this way. I don't recommend it. I think it's a double-edged sword. Trust me, I've tasted both sides of that sword. But you can use Twitter to be a speaker, to let your opinions go forward into the world and to interact with people. And the rest of the lecture is going to be about my suggestions for how to do that. Tweet your opinion. You know, I'm always fascinated that medicine is a great field where people keep their opinion to themselves about technical medical matters for decades. Not a month goes by where someone doesn't call me and say, I think this drug or device is useless or bad, but my advisors advise me to never say that or speak that in public. What are you saving your opinion for? Who are you going to tell it to? And when? On your deathbed? If you have an opinion on something, especially a medical drug or device or something that has to do with your profession, you should say it. And if you want to say something on Twitter, people want to read your opinion. They don't want to read other people's opinions. They want to read your opinion. That's why we're tuning in to your channel. So I say don't hesitate. Tweet your opinion. Don't have any reservations about it. Tweet your work. Sometimes people ask me, is it narcissistic to tweet my own work? No, it isn't. It's narcissistic to make your own Wikipedia page. It is perfectly acceptable to tweet your own work. People are following you on Twitter because they want to read what you're doing and you should give them what they want. They're not going to find your article that is published in a journal that no one reads and that maybe even your own mother wouldn't read if you give her a copy. They need you to bring them to that article. So tweet your work, explain your work, say why you did it, tell the backstory, make a tutorial. That's good Twitter use. In fact, I want more of that in my, in my readership mode. Don't live in the replies. You know, there's some people out there who don't tweet their own stuff. They just reply to other people. You don't want to be one of those people. You don't want to live in the replies of other people's replies. If you have something to say, you say it. You make your own thread. You spit it out the way you want to say it. Don't live in other people's definitions in the way they frame debates. You frame it the way you want to frame it. Argue selectively and for the crowd. It's really important to pick and choose your battles. You can't argue with everybody on the internet. You'll be there all day and all night. But neither should you not engage with anyone else. That's not the hallmark of somebody who has confidence, who's comfortable with their positions. Like some people say that they are only using it as an output. Well, that's not really the spirit of the website. Argue selectively. Don't pick every battle. And remember, you're not arguing to change the mind of the interlocutor. You're arguing to change the minds of the audience. Argue for the crowd. The crowd are the people who want to hear what you have to say. Three strikes and you are out. You know, this is an important one. Give three attempts to try to correct the ideas, misperceptions, to try to make your case. And after that, you are out. Don't keep trying. Just move on. Three strikes is enough. Three attempts to really make your case. Then give up. 
the arguments go over and over again. They are repetitive, and they rehash the same thing. And those of us in the audience, we're sick of it. Make your best attempt. Try it again, and try it one last time, and then move on. Mute that thread. Get on, get on out of there. What's your channel about? You know, I don't want to tell anyone how they should or shouldn't use this website, but I would just ask you to consider, what is your channel about? People are tuning into your Twitter channel because they're getting something they're not getting on another channel. In my case, you're going to get cancer drug policy, evidence-based medicine, better medical decision-making. You're going to get clinical trial appraisal. You're going to get statistical science. You're going to get epidemiology. That's what you're going to get. You know what you're going to get. What's your channel about? What do you want your channel to be? I think that a lot of people try to make their channel about three or four things. My channel is about canoeing and about evidence-based medicine. Well, that's an interesting channel. There's not going to be a lot of people interested in canoeing and evidence-based medicine. So I try very hard to keep my channel focused on what I know well and what I care about, and I try not to spend a lot of time talking about extraneous issues. And I don't try to talk about politics because I don't believe there's ever been a human being whose mind was changed about politics from reading social media feeds. But I could be wrong. But either case, it's not my expertise. I'm not an expert politician or political scientist, and I don't think that's the forum. I don't think that's why people are tuning into my channel, and so I'm going to keep it about what I want to keep it about. Please, no flattery. Not every single person is the greatest person on earth, and not every single paper, especially fragmented, broken, and incorrect papers, are the best paper. Congratulations should be used sparingly, in life and on Twitter. Never tweet about topics for which you truly lack expertise. I'm not a constitutional lawyer. It would be wrong of me to comment about Supreme Court cases that I do not fully understand. I listen to podcasts where I understand, at best, 65% of the material, proving that I'm not equipped to tweet about constitutional law. In all cases, perhaps, insofar as the Myriad Genetics case, yeah, I could tweet about that. But should I be tweeting about things that I don't know anything about? No. Better to remain silent and be thought a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. Respond selectively and seriously to feedback. You know, don't be dismissive when you respond. You don't have to respond to everything. You don't have to respond to every crank out there. But for people who, in good faith, try to engage with what you're saying, respond to some of them. And when you do respond, take their feedback seriously. Don't judge them. Don't refer them to write a letter to the editor if, God forbid, you yourself are the editor or anything like that. Engage with them. Make a case. Bolster your points and clarify and sometimes ask people to unpack or explain what they mean. This is going to be a controversial one, but never tweet follow lists. That's one of my philosophies. These are inherently exclusionary. There's always going to be some meritorious people you leave off. And people are going to get offended by it. And people who you include are not going to really care too much that you included them. I think you can only invite trouble on your head if you tweet lists of people to follow. And also, I think that that's not how Twitter should be used. You shouldn't really go on Twitter with a list of people to follow. You should use it organically. Use it as a reader. And people whose content fall in your lap and you enjoy it, you should follow those people. Let it grow organically. Don't make it inorganic, as follow lists do. And especially bad if professional organizations put out must-follow lists at the time of academic conferences. That's in poor taste. That's going to leave out people. And frankly, it's none of the professional organization's business who comments about research at that professional organization. They need to allow the dialogue to occur naturally. So I would encourage them to stop putting out those lists. They're in poor taste. And, well, someday... It's going to bite them the hard way. So they're going to learn that the hard way. I promise you that in a few years. It's not as good as it was. You know, people always like to lament the past and think we used to live in a better time. But I can assure you that just a few years ago, medical Twitter had more rich and nuanced debates and it was less polarized and less heated. And it was better. It's worse now. But, you know, that comes with the territory. Things change. Don't fuel the toxicity. And what I mean by that is it's getting worse, and there are things you do that can make it worse or things you choose to do that can make it better. We can only take responsibility for ourselves. And recently I put out a thread called Here's How to Make It Better. 
and you can take a look at that thread if you're interested. When you argue with somebody, mark the points of disagreement. We agree about X, Y, and Z, but what we disagree about is Q or A, B, and C. Mark what you disagree about. Mark that specifically. Because sometimes it turns out people don't really disagree. They're just arguing back and forth because they don't have the same style, but they have the same points of view. And that's a futile and empty argument. Never, never resort to an ad hominem attack. It's never about the other person, and don't make it about that person. And don't comment about what they do. Uh, don't make it personal. Keep it above the belt. Don't perseverate. If somebody annoys you Monday by having an opinion on a certain issue, and on Tuesday they bring up a different topic, don't drag them back to the, the debate that occurred on Monday. Don't rehash the old issue. There's some people out there who perseverate on things for years, and... I honestly wonder if they're okay or if they need some support or help because that's not good. You got to move on. This is online. This isn't, this isn't the end of the world. This is somebody else has a different opinion. You don't have to perseverate. You can mute them. You can move on. You can not engage with them. You can try once to argue with them and then let it go. You're not going to win that war. Don't be the fifth person to criticize somebody. Don't be the fifth or sixth person to pile on. If somebody gets slammed four times, just leave it, let it go. You don't need to be the person piling on. I think that creates the sort of mob, mob rule feel of Twitter that people don't like. No snitch tweeting. If you read somebody tweet something and you think it's about someone else or something else, don't CC them. Because one, you might be wrong. And two, it's a poor move. It's in poor taste. It's just instigating a fight. Who wants to be that kind of person? It's, uh, it's bad. Three tags a month and you are out. Don't write long threads and tag hundreds of people. They don't want to be tagged. Trust me. Half my day is muting things that people tag me in that I don't want to be tagged in. You should use tags sparingly. You know, occasionally you might read something that really connects with somebody in your network. I read something that I think Mandrola's going to love. I'm going to tag him in it. But, you know, three tags a month. Let's, let's limit that. I wish there were a way Twitter could do that. Don't debate someone's right to have an opinion. You know, if it's cancer screening, don't say that just because I'm the frontline surgeon who sees these patients, I'm the only one entitled to have an opinion. That's the kind of really poor level debates that I see so often. Don't debate someone's right to have an opinion on an issue. If you want to debate them, debate them on the merits. And if you don't want to debate them, don't debate them at all. But don't argue about whether or not they have the validity or standing to have an opinion. That's, that's just foolish. Again, debate for the audience's sake. You're not going to persuade the other person. You might persuade someone in the audience. So keep that in mind always. Don't nitpick about word choice. You read something you generally agree with. You don't like one or two words. Let it go. This is a short forum. People aren't spending a lot of time thinking exactly how they want to phrase things. And you know what? They might not have that intention in their mind. They might not have even recognized that. It is uh, on the cuff. And you should treat it as such. And let's not edit this to death. You got to call out, block bad behavior, and not encourage it or like it. You know, sometimes you see somebody with whom you persistently disagree. You might even dislike that person, but if someone treats them poorly, don't like that. That is in poor taste. Call it out. Block that person. Mute that person. Don't fuel bad behavior. If you yourself wouldn't really say it, I don't think you should be liking it. It's fine to disagree with somebody, but don't pile on with people who hit them below the belt. That's not good. Well, that's it for me. This is my opinions on how you should use Twitter as a medical professional. You don't like it? You should have stopped listening to this video long ago. But if you do like it, you can hit the like button. You can comment. Actually, if you don't like it, you can comment as well. And you can subscribe to this, this YouTube channel, which I am still experimenting with. So, see how it goes.